Welcome back, everyone. So I know I was gone for pretty much the entirety of December. I apologize. I'm still here. Fine. I took time off for Christmas, New Year's, stuff like that. Wanted to spend time with my family. Uh, I've been also working a whole lot for my full-time job. So that's been kind of taking time out of my recording schedule. But it's a new year. We're going to get back right back on track on things. So there's that. Uh, a couple other little side notes here. Uh, there will be some big announcements coming up in the next several months. Um, nothing is, I'm going to be talking about recently. Just saying, keep your lookout. Uh, some more announcements coming up. Some side products I'm working on. Uh, as well as getting back to Twitch. Uh, I'll be streaming again. Um, trying to fix my streaming schedule. But yeah, so there's that. There's some updates coming up. As we get closer to that time, I'll go ahead and, and keep you guys informed. So I did forget one actual announcement that I was going to talk about. So one of the big things that um, I want to talk about is Kamigawa is coming up. Now, I'm probably going to be doing lot more lore videos for Kamigawa mainly because that is my favorite set I know a lot of players hated Kamigawa but I loved it that's the set that I got into magic with I thought the samurai were cool the ninja were awesome the equipment was weird <laughs> but still uh, expect to see a lot of stuff for Kamigawa I might be doing some deck techs about some old Kamigawa legends just to kind of like reinvigorate some players but yeah, expect to see that coming up in the future. Some lore videos coming out for characters of Kamigawa. I'm not doing every legendary. There is way too many in the set. I'm just going to pick my favorites and talk about my favorites. And that's it. <laughs> Don't expect to have a lore video for every legendary creature coming out of Kamigawa. It's too much to do that. Please don't ask me to do that. Now, if you have a specific legend you want, to, you want me to talk about from Kamigawa... Leave, uh, leave a comment down in the comment section below. As you guys know, I always read my comments and try to respond accordingly. So leave me a comment if there's a certain legendary creature or yeah, legendary creature that you would like me to talk about from Kamigawa. I just want to thank everyone who has uh, stuck with me throughout my hiatus, as well as I'm really, really proud to, to finally hit that over 100 mark. So thank you guys all for subscribing and constantly viewing my stuff as well as you know supporting my channel really appreciate it it means the world to me it really does because i do this mainly just for fun oh uh i kind of threw up a poll uh not a poll but i asked the question to several of the commander um groups i'm a part of on facebook stuff like that as well as you know my local my local game stores um and i kind of want to just talk about some of the the things i saw on there now this isn't me saying that anyone's playing magic incorrectly, anything like that. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying this is the impressions I got from reading the comments towards my question or the answers that people gave me for this question. Now, for those of you who read the title of this video, we're going to be talking about restrictions in Commander and what type of restrictions people do uh, for themselves or what kind of restrictions are people under. Now, before we get into uh like what pe the people said basically i'm gonna save the question i asked i asked uh one of my facebook groups that i'm on if you know what kind of restrictions as a player you use and or do you use restrictions as a player as a deck builder and if you do what type of restrictions do you use the big answer i got and it's gonna be probably the shortest bit here is budget now not everyone can i'm saying now a lot not everyone can go ahead and you know drop a hundred two hundred dollars on dual lands um can't drop 50 to 60 bucks on fetch lands or 20 dollars depending on the fetch land you know people can drop that kind of money on cards you know 50 60 dollars for crater hoof behemoth stuff like that so budget tends to be the biggest restriction in commander now I don't think that bud that budget is a bad thing. I think budget's a great thing because you have to be a little more, in my mind, you have to be a little bit more creative with your card selection because you're not just throwing 
every really good card in there. You know, you're not throwing Demonic Tutors in there. You're not throwing Sensei's Divining Tops. You know, you're not throwing, you know, Vampire Tutors or all the fetch lands. So having that budget restriction, I think a lot of players take it and make it very creative. They find interesting workarounds. Uh, they build around really cool engines that are cheap and they can afford it. So budget tends to be one of the coolest uh, creativity brewers that I've seen is built on a budget. And that's something I try to mimic here when I build my budget decks for you guys is I try to think outside of the box. I try to, you know, pull, lay my plan. You know, this is how the deck's going to win. But now how can I get there with X amount of dollars? So I think budget speaks very loudly about a restriction for people and what they can afford to put in their decks. But I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's really awesome when I see these $25 to $50 decks just stomping down like the, per the, the decks that people have like put thousands of dollars in. It's definitely happened to me. So, so that is one of the, the big things I got when I asked about restrictions is you know, budget. A lot of people say, you know, I, I can't afford to buy these cards. So I don't, I just buy these cards instead. So another thing I got, which didn't surprise me, cause this is something that I've been doing a lot lately is one of the biggest restrictions that I, I saw from people was play less tutors. By play less tutors, it means not playing the optimal tutor cards, not playing demonic tutor. Vampiric Tutor, Enlightened Tutor, uh, Mystical Tutor, you know, stuff like that. You know, very cheap, you know, mana cost wise, cheap tutors to get you certain combo pieces, get you any card out of your library. Uh, a lot of players that um, that I know are that and that have responded to me was saying they decided to take a lot of tutors out of their deck to decrease the consistency and make the deck less you know basically autopilot you just sit down you shuffle up draw your hand you tutor for your win con and that's game so a lot of players have taken that those tutors out so that they open up their deck building to have to rely more on card draw engines having to rely more on top deck matters manipulating the top deck you know stuff like that which now i'm not going to say having a bunch of tutors is bad if that's what you want to play, so what you want to play. Tutors are great cards, super powerful, always have been, always will be. But, you know, taking those out really makes each turn more of a think tank. You really have to process, okay, what card, okay, so I drew this card. Now I can draw a couple more cards here and let's see what that can give me. So it tends to make to where instead of going, okay, I just play this, I search this, now I play this. And okay, here is my combo, which, you know, is fine if you're playing in that type of environment where you want to do that. I talk to my hands a lot. It's fine to do all that stuff. But a lot of players I've noticed have just kind of strayed away from the tutors and have relied more on card draw engines and playing their deck through that way, which I think is really cool because that's something that I've actually started doing more recently. Um, I don't run, you know, if I run a tutor, it's not going to be the most optimal tutor or it's going to be like a super budget version. Like one of my favorite, like budget tutors is, I believe it's called call of the clans. It's a red and a green instant that says search your library for up to three creature cards with different names. Uh, choose one at random, put it into your hand, and then you shuffle the rest back into your library. So I think that one is super fun. I tend to run it in a lot of, uh, in a lot of like gruel decks. I think it's super cool. And then, you know, Eldarmi's Call, in, in my opinion, is like an okay version of Worldly Tutor. But, you know, there's still tutors, but like they're not, you know, they're not as, in my mind, they're not as bad as Vampiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor. Uh, Worldly Tutor, you know, the one and two drop tutors that just like get you any card you ever want when you want it. So, but that was something I, I found pretty interesting through, through kind of reading through the comments 
and seeing what everyone is saying. I'm gonna shift my shirt. So there was that one. And then another one I got, which I think was pretty interesting and says a lot, I think, about the Commander community as, an, as a whole, at least in some of the circles that I've, I, I, I talk around in. Um, a lot of players that I've talked to restrict their combos. Uh, if they're playing a combo deck, they don't play the one and two card win cons. So a lot of them aren't playing Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation or Tainted Pack. Stuff like that that just auto win you the game by just playing two cards. You know, so a lot of people aren't playing stuff like, even though I don't see it very often, and I don't think it's that bad of a combo, but like Paragon Drake, Deadeye Navigator, you know, two card infinite combo make you infinite mana. Usually you pair it with a commander that draws a card when it comes into play or has a draw ability that you activate, stuff like that. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of players have transitioned away from those, you know, two card infinite combos and more transition to like, if they run an infinite combo, it takes three to four pieces. Usually they want the pieces to be able to interact on their own on the board. So they're not just drawing dead cards and stuff like that. So I found that incredibly interesting that I think a lot of players are finally realizing that they just don't want to win that way, which is cool. You know, it makes the games a little more fun, it makes games longer. Sometimes longer games is not that great. Sometimes it is great. But I think it's interesting that a lot of players have transitioned from, oh, I play, you know, Isochron Scepter, Traumatic Reversal, activate it, make infinite mana with all my artifacts, you know, all my mana rocks out. You know, now it's more of like, okay, I'm just gonna do this fun loop or this like non-infinite loop and just generate a bunch of value and then win from there. So I think that speaks a lot to where the commander community has been going to, especially recently with a lot more people, you know, having the rule zero conversations, really seeing what kind of games they want, you know, play groups, you know, feeling comfortable enough with each other to, you know, have those conversations of, okay, what kind of game played, what kind of game do we want today? What kind of group are we? Stuff like that. I think it speaks a lot to players and a lot to the format as a whole and the community as a whole. So another one of the big responses I got um, through that question was the fact that a lot of players, you know, don't put restrictions on themselves. A lot of players will just put good cards in a deck because they're good cards. Now that I do understand because I have my decks where I put cards in there just because they're good cards. If you see my Corval list, it's a very tuned list. Again, I don't play a lot of tutors in the list because personally, I don't think the deck needs tutors because Corvold is a huge draw engine and I cycle through my deck super fast anyways. So I'm just going to pull what I need half the time really quickly anyways. But, you know, I do put really powerful cards. I have Dockside Extortionist in there. Um, I run the free commander spells in there that are within my colors except for the green one. So I have the black and red, you know, and I just put very strong cards in there because when I play the deck, you know, I'm playing... Seriously, you know, I want to I want to play at a higher power level, so I'm going to put really good cards in there. I have all the mana dorks, you know, fast acceleration, trying to get Corvold out, out on turn three, turn two, some if not, if if possible. So I get that, you know, sometimes you don't want to put that restriction on yourself. Sometimes you just want to buy, you know, that demonic tutor. You guys want, you know, you want to play the demonic tutor. You want to play you know all the fetch lands and that's that's very valid because oh, it feels good cracking a fetch and then just like getting that perfect mana base it just feels right it really does and i get it because i have my decks where i don't put a budget on myself and i can go kind of crazy and go over the top and build really powerful decks i have my decks that i can do that with and then I have my decks where it's like, okay, this is going to be, I'm going to put a restriction on this because I want it to be more fun and fun for everyone. Because the decks that I don't res put restrictions on, that's more fun for me. Not really fun for the table. <laughs> Let's be real here. I play Grand Arbiter. I play Stacks decks, stuff like that. It's not fun for everyone. So, but yeah, that's some of the stuff I got recently from the, uh, from that and I thought it was pretty interesting seeing all the different reactions that people had to my question 
and I only kind of talked about like the three main things that people talked about. Uh, some of the other restrictions that I saw were kind of, you know, just like personal stuff. Um, some people were saying how they won't use like a lot of mana rocks when they build decks or they don't use soul ring and stuff like that, which I thought was kind of cool, but I didn't think it was like a lot of people were saying it enough to really have its own topic. But seeing all that was pretty interesting. Gave me a good insight into, you know, commander players as a general and within a whole. So I really did enjoy seeing that side of the community and kind of seeing where everyone was at. So yeah, here we go. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Uh, as always, if you like my videos, please go ahead, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more of my content, feel free to hit that subscribe button and then ring that bell if you want to be notified for whenever new stuff comes out. And as always, play more games!